Hey, it's Jason from Twin Cities My Education. So Tuesdays, when we send out the newsletter, um, I answer questions. We do a little Q&A on quite a few of them. And this week, we got a question that actually fits in with a bunch of wines I'm popping for a class tonight. So I figured we'll do a video instead. So here we go. From William in Minneapolis. Hey, Jason, I love Pinot Noir. I drink a ton from the Russian River Valley in Santa Rita Hills. Good job, William. I'm really getting into Willamette Valley. Good choice, well done. Next up for me is Burgundy, and I'm totally perplexed and don't know where to start. Help. Awesome. Thank you for writing, William, and here is a quick introduction, if that's possible with Burgundy, to the Côte de Nuit, which is the northern part of Burgundy. Here we go. I'm going to try to keep this simple but clear at the same time. Okay, Burgundy can be confusing. Burgundy is continental. Burgundy is southeast of Paris. Look for the city of Dijon. And Dijon will indicate the northern end of the Côte d'Or, which is the long swath that most people refer to as Burgundy when they talk about Burgundy. Burgundy is actually a few other areas as well, but this is kind of the main swath. And what we're going to talk about here is only the northern half of that swath. The northern half is called the Côte de Nuit. Southern half is the Côte de Bonne. The whole thing is called the Côte d'Or. This way is north, okay? So this is roughly west. Toward me is east, that way is south. Here we go. At the very northern end of the Côte de Nuit is a little village called Marcinet, and here is where they plant Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir grown in Marcinet tends to be relatively simple. It tends to be kind of just grapey and forward and juicy. Um, it actually didn't become an AOC until the 1960s. Uh, actually, they're quite well known for their rosé, their rosé of Marcinet, which is um, delicious stuff. And a lot of that rosé and a lot of this wine in general gets consumed up here in Dijon. Likewise, when you go a little bit further south, the next village down is Fizan. It looks like fixin'. The joke in the wine business is I'm fixin' for some burgundy. And Fizan also gets consumed quite a bit up in Dijon. Fizan is where the wines get a little bit more masculine, a little bit more kind of animalistic, a little bit more that barnyard thing coming up. All of a sudden you get, you get um, richness and concentration and some tannin involved. So very different from here. Neighboring village, that's grapey and fresh and fun. Here we get into those, these kind of gutsier styles of wine. And then we go further south still, and we hit Gevry Chambertin. Gevry Chambertin is an incredibly well-known village for wine. Uh, Gevry Chambertin um, is huge. It's the largest AOC village within all of Burgundy. And as a result, you see a lot of it out there. A lot of it can be quite good. And here we get into a richer style still with a little bit more refinement than Fizan. Fizan can be a little bit kind of rough and ready. Here we get a little bit more detail, a little bit more finesse. Uh, Jean-Marie Chambertin, very good stuff. A little hint when you see Villevin right there. Villevin means old vines. Okay. So moving further south still, we move into Maury Saint Denis. Now, Maury Saint Denis is a smaller appellation than Gevry Chambertin to the north. Maury Saint Denis is full of incredibly good growers and really, really, really high quality fruit. So, if there's one region within all of Burgundy actually that I would just roll the dice and buy a bottle from a producer I don't quite know, it'd probably be Maury Saint Denis. Maurice Saint Denis, um, in terms of village level wine, tends to be really, really good, especially from a great vintage like 2015. Now, that's a young wine. Uh, this is uh, a wine, um, it's 2019 right now, so we're four years from the vintage. Um, tonight at the wine class, I'm going to decant this thing for about an hour and a half or two hours before I serve it. That's going to be about the right amount of time. I don't have a bottle of Chambon Moussigny or Vigeau or Von Romani. So these little uh, stand-ins are going to be um, taking their place. But take note of the shape of the bottle. This is a burgundy-shaped bottle with this uh, nice slope right here. Um, these are not burgundy-shaped bottles. This is almost more like some you'd find in the Jura or something like that. Um, this one here, these squat little fun things. I, I, I like these things. They're fun. But the official bottle of burgundy are these nice uh, slight tapered shoulders right here. All right, moving down to Chambon Moussigny and Vougeot and Von Romigny. These wines here, combined with Maurice Saint Denis, is where you get a lot more elegance, okay? So up here, we had a lot more tannin, a lot more concentration, a lot more guts. As soon as you move into Maurice Saint Denis, Chambon, Vougeot, 
and Von Ormini, all of a sudden you have a lot more detail and beauty and elegance and things like that going on. So Pinot Noirs from here tend to be very, very different than Pinot Noirs from here, which are very different than Pinot Noirs from here. Welcome to Burgundy. Within all of these villages, you have Premier Cru and Grand Cru vineyards. Um, that's a whole nother video on top, of, uh, on top of this, but just keep in mind, you have diff different expressions throughout all of these little areas right here. Chambo Moussigny is an area that I like a lot. Um, I think Chambo Moussigny has a lot to offer in terms of beautiful styles of wine. Vujo is controversial because most of Vujo is one Grand Cru vineyard called Claude de Vujo. And Claude de Vujo is such a huge vineyard that it has all these different personalities to it. Um, that's an area that I don't recommend you getting into right away when it comes to getting into Burgundy for the first time. Moving down to Von Romanet. Von Romanet tends to be beautiful, but also really, really expensive. Fun stuff, but I think that for bang for the buck, stick up here with Moise Saint-Denis and Gervais Chambertin. Then you move a little bit further south and you have Nuit Saint George. So just keep in mind, here's George right here, okay? Nuit Saint George. So between Nuit Saint George and Dijon is where you have the Cote de Nuit, okay? Nuit Saint George, when you come down to this part, this is where you get a whole new type of wine. All of a sudden, these things are rich and kind of stinky and earthy and rough and, and full of tannin and grip. Nuit Saint George is, is a it can be an angry wine when it's super young. So for tonight's class, we're doing a 2010 because that's probably entering a really nice phase right now, especially being a Premier Cru. It's a Premier Cru single vineyard from 2010, and it's probably gonna be showing really well tonight. We'll find out later on, it's gonna be great. Then the last one I wanna to mention to you, as far as the Cote de Nuit, is this category, Bourgogne Haute Cote de Nuit. When you're talking about Haute Cote de Nuit, these are vineyards that are located further up the hill and kind of behind the forest from Nuit St. George. So there are all these little vineyards kind of up in this area up here and those combine for the Haute Cote de Nuit. So those wines can be really good buys, uh, quite a few vintages, especially from a good producer and really fun stuff, bang for the buck. When it comes to the Cote de Nuit, that is a nice quick introduction. Good luck William, hope you find some fun wines to drink. Thank you.